You begin by ending your search for love. I say it again. You begin by ending your search for love. No more searching. So what does the poet mean by those that go searching for love only make manifest their own lovelessness? Well, when you seek something, you feel that what you're striving for is missing from your life. If it's love, for example, then what you're really saying is, I'm experiencing lovelessness, and in my seeking, I hope to fill this void. But the problem with this approach is that rather than filling the love void, it only puts you further out of balance, and lovelessness continues to be your experience. Why? Because you're weighted more in lovelessness than in lovingness. Your thoughts are focused on finding what's missing, while your desire is for love to flow into your life. This kind of misalignment continues to attract more of what's missing. What you're thinking about is the love that's not there. The universe cooperates by matching up vibrationally with precisely what you're thinking about. How does the universe know to do this? Well, it's merely matching its vibration to your thoughts through the law of attraction. You need to turn off the searchlights and dismiss the search party and instead replace them with an energy of loving thoughts an internal knowing about receiving love. You originated from a place of spirit. That's defined by love. When you begin rebalancing your life so that your desire and the way you think and behave are a loving partnership, you'll realize that your desire is really God-realization. The longing for love is a longing to become more like God in your thoughts. With this awareness, you soon realize that searching outside of yourself for what you already are is the ultimate folly. No one else can give this to you. As D. H. Lawrence says, the loveless never find love. This is because the loveless are focused on not having what they desire rather than on what they already are. Furthermore, the loveless believe that they're unworthy of the love they desire, and guess what? They continue to attract more evidence of their unworthiness. With the searchlights turned off and the one-person search party given a permanent rest, you can turn your attention to balancing the authentic means at your disposal for receiving abundant love. This, then, is the irony, summed up perfectly in the poet's conclusion that only the loving find love, and they never have to seek for it. Becoming the love My definition of love goes beyond the admittedly delicious lust and excitement that you experience when you first become infatuated. Ultimately, these inflamed passions fade away, and what remains is authentic love, or the balance you're seeking. And what is a prime example of this? It is to love as God does, to extend the caring that defines your very creation outward whenever and wherever possible. Love of this nature leads you to forget about your own ego and want what you desire for yourself even more for another. This is how the act of creation seems to work. Your creator doesn't ask anything from you in exchange for giving you life. It's given freely and abundantly, and no one is excluded. You don't have to repay God for giving you this life, or the air you need in order to live, or the water you drink for your very existence, or the sun that sustains you. Without any of these freely given ingredients, you wouldn't continue to live. This is the love that God offers you. To balance your life with more lovingness, you need to match your thoughts and behaviors with those of your source, being love in the way that God is. This means noticing when you're inclined to judge yourself or others as though you or they are unworthy of love. This means suspending your need to be right in favor of being kind toward yourself and others, and deliberately extending kindness everywhere. This means giving love to yourself and others rather than demanding love. This means your loving gesture of kindness is heartfelt because you feel love flowing from within, not because you want something in return. A tall order? Not really, unless you believe that it's going to be difficult. Lovingness is a feature of your natural state, and your ego isn't part of that state. Ego dominates because you've separated yourself from your God self, the loving self that came here from a place of perfectly divine, unconditional love. You've carried this ego idea of your own self-importance, your need to be right, for so long that you've deluded yourself into believing that the ego self is who you are. Talk about being out of balance. You've opted for a belief in pure illusion. By allowing this illusion to be the dominant force, you've created through your ego-centered self a heavy imbalance in your life. The result is that you want to feel love, the real thing, the love that is the very essence of your being, the love that you are, but you feel emptiness instead of lovingness. Why is this so? 
Because the emptiness can only be filled with love by opening your heart connection to the spirit of love that originates, you know not where, but can be felt within you. It's your empty space, no one else's. Therefore, only you can fill it. Your objective is to ask love within you to make its presence known, to have an awareness of being so full of love that this is what you have to give away. That's all you have to do, ask and receive. By doing just that, you'll attract more of what you're giving away.